perfectly. These two hull sections were once one. Together, they account for almost 70 feet of Titanic's bottom, located just beneath and aft of the third funnel, right where she broke apart. These pieces are the best forensic evidence engineers and marine architects have ever had to understand the breakup. The one thing this expedition did very well was go down and record the edges so we can see exactly what the shape of the steel at the moment it separated. And we can see places where things were pushed together, places where things were bent. And if we can go back and fit all of those pieces together, we may be able to sort of run the movie in reverse and come up with a very good explanation of exactly how the, the ship came apart. In December, the team gathers at Woods Hole to discuss and debate the meaning of the double bottom pieces. Nice to meet you. Nice to put a face to the emails. And uh, everything else. It's what they've all been working toward. A chance to reach initial conclusions about the breakup of Titanic. Hi. Um, what we've been working on is taking the 1985 and 1986 data uh, that was collected. Bill Lang begins. This is a zoomed in window. The stern is sitting right about here. He's been working to map the debris field because he thinks it contains clues to the timeline of the disaster. Okay, you've got 60 feet of keel member in these two pieces, roughly. Bill is convinced the location of the two double bottom pieces far to the east marks the moment when the breakup began. Well, I mean, I think this is number one, okay, because number one to me is, is where the ship broke up. To me, this is the primary debris field associated with the ship. You're saying these two double bottom pieces were on their way to the bottom while well, the bow and stern were still on the surface. Yes. 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 And that this, this point in time represents probably when the bow and stern started to separate. Okay? And that means, that's X marks the spot right above that is where the where ship broke. Titanic's final moment was. Somewhere what? here the ship died when the keel broke because these are the these are the keel but sections. regardless of whether this is the actual spot, what caused the breakup? When did it start? How did it progress? And how did it determine the fate of the passengers? Since the breakup was confirmed in 1985, most Titanic researchers have come to believe it began just before the final plunge. According to this theory, Titanic reached a high angle, over 30 degrees, and the weight of the unsupported stern caused the structure to fail, cracking from the top down. Though it had to be terrifying, passengers would have known that the end was near. The ship was starting down, and in moments, they would be in the water. Well, when I first started reviewing the videos and the data that the History Channel expedition brought back, the only thing I could conclude was... But to Roger Long, the expedition's findings suggest the timing of the breakup may have been different and the angle shallower. The steel doesn't lie. It doesn't protect reputations. It doesn't have false memories. It never forgets. And as we've looked at the steel, no one thing, but all these little indicators seem to point to the shallower angle. We all agree that the stern broke off because it, it was lifted and the weight of the water and the weight of the stern working against each other, the ship was being bent like this. And when you bend a long structure like a ship or a girder, the top of it stretches and gets longer and the bottom gets pushed together. So you've got your know, tension at the top and compression at the bottom. And somewhere in the middle... Roger the believes if the stern snapped off at a high angle, the edges of the brake would be pulled apart at the top and pushed together or compressed at the bottom. But the broken edges of the upper decks of Titanic's bow section don't seem just to have pulled apart. 
they're mangled and bent steeply downward. And the edges of the double bottom that should be crushed and compressed instead appear cleanly broken off. If it broke from this high angle, everything up the top side should be quite clean and straight, and all of the, the chaos and the jumbling and the crunching together should be down at the bottom. And we see exactly the opposite. And furthermore, if, if it crashed off like in the movie, everything would have separated and we wouldn't have seen these evidence of all these pieces being mashed in on themselves and twisted and so forth. So the key point is that something interrupted the breakup. Roger now thinks that the breakup began at a shallow angle, perhaps as little as 11 degrees, and progressed in two stages. So what that means basically to me is that the inner bottom broke separately from the ship. First, the upper structure fails, starts to crack. The crack stops at the double bottom, which is now all that's holding Titanic together. It starts to bend under the strain. Then the sides separate. The double bottom starts to fail. Tons of water pull the middle of the ship down, bending Titanic the other way. Upper decks are compressed and mangled together. The bow heads for the bottom. The stern is the last to sink. This scenario, the breakup starting at a shallower angle, suggests the 1,500 people still aboard may have been caught by surprise. Ultimately, it's a very different human experience because this whole question of hope comes in. The people are on board a ship that appears to be not sinking very fast. And there was, it was very reasonable at that point to believe that it might float for a considerably longer period of time. So if we accept that the breakup happened at this point, this early breakup, I think we come inescapably to the conclusion that the breakup was not something that just happened as a ship made her final plunge, but the breakup caused the final plunge. The breakup determined when the ship sank, and therefore the breakup determined whether a lot of people lived or died. What you just stated there is backed up by personal testimony. Uh, the order of the launching of the lifeboats it was very orderly. It appears that the crew had in mind that they had longer to get people off. They knew that the ship was going to sink, but that they might have more time than what it turned out to be. So there's, there's crew members who actually state they did not think the ship was going to sink. They thought it would settle to a certain point, and then it would stop sinking. But I think that's what everyone was expecting, was that she would float as her own lifeboat until the Carpathia got there, or until rescue ships they arrived. Quite possibly could have overlooked this, because people up here were concentrated on boats. People here were looking for... If Titanic had floated longer, the few hours of extra time crew members hoped for might have made all the difference. And this is when light hauler, we believe, was washed off right about here. And he certainly wasn't looking at what was going on. It's barely two hours after the sinking when Carpathia arrives. Sunrise reveals an enormous field of ice and floating bodies. Mother said the worst she ever saw was in the morning. To see all these people drifting around their boat in an upright position with life jackets on. Where the cold had been too much to sustain life. And they were drifting all around the lifeboats. They were all frozen to death, all of them. 1,500 people have died. Carpathia retrieves roughly 700 survivors from the lifeboats, then heads for New York. When she arrives on April 18th, 10,000 people are waiting. A U.S. Senate investigation begins the next morning. In three weeks, a British inquiry will follow. Back 
back at the wreck site, over the next weeks and months, hundreds of bodies are retrieved. On April 25th, Alma Paulson, the young mother from Sweden, is recovered. Another body located is bandleader Wallace Hartley. When he is laid to rest in England, thousands attend. The musicians' families receive tributes from all over the world. But from White Star's agent, they get only a bill. Money owed for lost uniforms. Many victims, like Melvina Dean's father, are never located. He was an extremely handsome man. And I think he must have had a very, very nice personality. Some of the others, they found the bodies floating and that and all kind of thing, but uh, he was never found. After Titanic, passenger ships will carry enough lifeboats for everyone on board. And they will slow down in ice. But new safety regulations aren't the only legacy of the tragedy. Titanic was more than a ship. She was an idea a symbol of pride and progress and human ingenuity. There was still enormous faith in technology. Here we are in 1912, and it seems as if the peaceful evolution of technology is going to promise greater and greater things for mankind. Today, the ship that was called unsinkable is dissolving away. Time and the ocean are completing what the iceberg began. Eventually, it will collapse upon itself. There will still be pieces of Titanic forever. The beautiful propellers in the back are made of bronze. Uh, they will be there. The telemotor gears, They'll be there, but someday, unfortunately, the Titanic will be a big orange stain on the bottom of the Atlantic. To protect the wreck, England, Canada, France, and the US have entered into an agreement to regulate artifact retrieval and prevent destructive exploration. In effect, the Titanic is a time capsule of what went on, um, both the rich and the poor on the Titanic, how they lived, um, how the ship was constructed. Um, all of that is very important for future generations. The debris field remains largely undocumented. Perhaps other clues await future expeditions. And I'm wondering how that fits into your, into your compression. Um, and debate will surely continue about the meaning of the double bottom pieces identified on this expedition. Even if it was, it didn't need to be hit. And Roger Long's theory of the breakup. Today, the White Star Pier in New York, where Titanic would have arrived, is still there. A ghostly echo of the past. You and I are certainly very fortunate that the double bottom hull sections we documented turned out to be so important. Well, and Roger had the insight to draw the conclusions that he did, which of course impact the timeline, the breakup of the hull, and what it was like for those people in Titanic's last moments. No, that's right. And the experts are going to continue to study the evidence. This is an event that happened in the dark 93 years ago. So no one is ever going to be completely satisfied. Nothing is ever going to be 100% proven. But I think we've come a long, long way towards understanding it. Even as the wreck disintegrates, 